Welcome to 2024, where in this amazing vlog I will be looking back at the Family Court Clown Bus shit show of last year. Yes, this is my review and take on the carnage within our beloved Family Court system, which is of course run by the circus ringmaster himself, the invisible leader and arguably the worst president of the Family Court in recent history, Mr Dressy Uppy himself, Sir Andrew McFarlane. But before I take a deep dive into the sewer pit of the family court, I simply must, yes I must, run my excellent introduction. I am Philip Kedge, the director of the amazing Mackenzie Friends UK network and a fearless family court vlogger. In all of my vlogs, my views and opinions are, as always, entirely my own. And don't forget to subscribe and like this vlog. And for all of your family court needs, please contact me today at www.contactphil.co.uk. So, 2023, what a year of absolute carnage that was. And what I observed as increasing outrageous levels of manipulation of the family court by resident parents, who are mostly mothers, with spurious allegations of hate, to throw the non-resident parents, who are mostly fathers, under the family court bus. I have seen the increased weaponization of the ill-conceived Domestic Abuse Act of 2021, a mighty weapon of family court war and a gift to all of the all too often sick in the head family court lawyers to raise and promote conflict, acrimony and hate for their own financial gain. I have observed the seemingly increasing number of judges from Planet Stupid who have been sucked into the family court manipulation with a cut and paste self-victimhood soundbites such as I was treading on eggshells, I lived in constant fear, the entire relationship was characterised by coercive control, backed up with nothing more than a total load of bollocks, where unfortunate expressions, perhaps heated arguments or some minor unsavoury altercations within long-term relationships are taken totally out of any common sense context by judges from Planet Stupid, who are on an industrial scale ordering disproportionate and unnecessary fact-finding hearings, whilst minimising, reducing, restricting and often denying contact, ripping apart the loving bonds between children and fathers for often months and months on end. It is utter madness. These family court judges simply spouting the family court mantra that the welfare of the child is paramount, whilst themselves causing untold emotional harm to children that is likely to need years of therapy to heal, by which time the broken relationships with fathers may have been permanently destroyed. The welfare of the child is paramount, my arse. I have seen more harm and suffering of children in the family courts than I have ever seen in my previous 22 year career as a senior police officer. And that's saying something. Now let me not hold back. In 2023 I submit that the family court has now reached new heights in its draconian, dystopian, broken and outdated approaches and practices. The current carnage has now reached clusterfuck proportions and that dial of destruction seemingly just keeps going up, day by day, month by month. In 2023, in many regions of the UK, we saw the return of CAFCAS extending the time to file Section 7 reports to 26 weeks. And as I sit here today, at the beginning of January 2024, Dates for the next hearings are being set for May and June, whilst parents, the mostly fathers, struggle to cope with the continued absence of their children, ripped apart from not only themselves but their extended families. I see fathers suffering a spiralling decline in their mental health as they feel isolated, attacked on all sides and being dragged through the mud by the brutal system that embraces the self-victimhood culture of mothers that wraps the mummies up in cotton wool and seemingly openly supports and even encourages their often narcissistic, spiteful, irrational, hateful and vengeful positions. 
And of course, it's not only the fathers who are suffering, with the family court being overwhelmed with the tsunami of spurious allegations based on hate and revenge, taking up what I see as 60% of cases, the mothers who are real victims of serious and significant domestic abuse are also being crushed by the system. These mothers who are forced to live and repeat their trauma, these mothers who themselves have to fight through the family court, in some cases for years, being re-victimised over and over again. And let's not forget, fathers themselves can be victims of serious and significant abuse. But what do you expect? The family court isn't interested in that, because as long as the mummy is looking after the children, the father's narrative is ignored, conveniently airbrushed away, placed in the too difficult basket, because the court isn't going to change the residency of the children. So what's the point of going down that road? It is one big mummy appeasement party. I have seen the no-fault divorce legislation adding to the cesspit of hate, as parents are no longer having their day in the divorce court to disparage, undermine, ridicule and throw mud at their ex, all that pent-up emotional hysteria is now being dragged into the family court, with the children being openly used as weapons of control against their ex. Oh, I can stop you seeing your children for months and months on end. Bitter revenge is going to be so sweet. And of course, all this fueled by the all too often sick in the head family court lawyers who have absolutely no professional duty of care to any child. How utterly disgraceful is that? Lawyers who I estimate lost 20% of their income when the new non-fault divorce legislation was implemented who I believe are now making up from those losses by cranking up the acrimony, actively signposting people away from mediation and pitting parents against each other in open warfare, alongside frequently engaging in tens of thousands of pounds of completely unnecessary work to make up for their shortfall. Family court lawyers whose entire business model is dependent on the existence of conflict, so think about that. It surely follows that creating conflict is paramount to their competitive survival. It really is one of the sickest professions on the planet. And we can get rid of them overnight. It's easy. Stop giving them your money. Which now leads me nicely onto the clearly collapsing scheme of the qualified legal representatives where alleged perpetrators and indeed also the accusers of alleged domestic abuse are entitled to the support of a free qualified legal representative who operate on behalf of the court to put questions to each of the respective parents during cross-examinations at fact findings and final hearings. Well, this scheme isn't going too well, because lawyers who sign up are only being paid legal aid rates, which in many cases is about a quarter of the fees they would be charging with private clients. So guess what? Very few lawyers are signing up to the scheme. And why would they? It would be stupid. It's equivalent to Turkey's voting for Christmas, as the new scheme means that you don't need to pay privately, for lawyers in the family court. But because of this failing scheme, what appears to be routinely happening is that fathers, having already waited months for their fact-finding hearings with limited or no contact with their children, and now at the last minute having hearings adjourned due to the non-availability of a qualified legal representative, adding months onto cases, with the backlogs to the already broken system increasing daily. What a shit show. So, is there anything that has gone right in the family court? Well, there is one thing which we should all be supporting, which is the Transparency Project, allowing the press into the family court to report on the chaos 
and who I believe will eventually expose a system that is now so unfit for purpose that it needs dismantling. But it appears that some family court judges are very resistant to this and want to continue to keep the family court as a closed and secretive establishment that North Korea would be proud of. Judges who don't want the press to scrutinise them. In a recent case, a judge banned a credible journalist from exercising their right to be present in the court and in a ranting outburst stated, and I quote, If you want to know my view on the transparency project, it is not supportive. I have said my piece to anyone who will listen to me and been ignored by people who are driving this forward. And I speak as a virtual lone voice, but I strongly hold the view and I am very unconvinced about the motives of some of the journalists. Do not forget that they, what they do, they sell copy. They have careers to pursue. In expressing such a disgraceful opinion in court during proceedings, that judge is happy to close the door on scrutiny to hide all the abuses of power that may exist within the family court, to maintain the secrecy that allows judges to act with impunity. The family court needs to quickly remove these judges from their positions because they undermine anything that is left in public confidence, which clearly isn't very much in any case. Ladies and gentlemen, so what is there to look forward to in 2024? Well, not a lot really, as the family court cesspit continues to be dominated by its broken and brutal processes imposed by the many judges from Planet Stupid, who with little understanding of the real world continue to pass judgments with a complete lack of common sense. Indeed, my guess is that things are about to get even worse, as I predict that it won't be too long before Kafkas, if not already, becomes fully captured by the transgender ideology, with family court advisors routinely questioning your children without your knowledge and consent about their gender identity, and where any parent not supporting that identity will be viewed as a serious risk of emotional harm to the child. You have been warned. I believe that this is going to be the next family court threat to parents and in particular fathers, where the irrational and false gender identity ideology becomes yet another new weapon of war, with mothers encouraging little Johnny to identify as a girl or non-binary to create mass division in parenting, where the father will be cast out by the system as a non-believer. No doubt the sick family court lawyers are already rubbing their hands in anticipation. I finish by expressing one desperate last gasp hope for the future of the family court, that in 2024 the chief family court circus ringmaster, Mr Dressy Uppy, steps down. After his appointment in July 2018, his time must surely now be up and he needs to now go. If he doesn't, I say God help anyone going through the family court this year. Well, that's me done, folks, and what fun I have had. But I suspect that for tens of thousands of you who are experiencing the family court shit show circus, that it really isn't that much fun at all. So that only leaves me to invite you to contact me, Phil Kedge, at the McKenzie Friends UK Network by going right now to www.contactphil.co.uk. Until next time, and for 2024, stay strong. <laughs>